What's happening guys? Another highly requested video. Everybody wants me to redo this one since the pandemic happened. We are going to be ranking the best and the worst STEM degrees all the way from S tier, which is the best, to F tier, which is going to be the worst. Okay, everybody knows that some degrees are really good, they're gonna pay off in the long term, and then some degrees are absolute garbage that are basically a waste of your money and you're just gonna be lining the university's pockets. Now, STEM degrees do tend to be better than your average degree, but with that being said, not all STEM degrees are created equally, and that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. I'm gonna be going through this list pretty quick, but before we get into it, if you have any questions that my free content on YouTube has not answered for you, which I post the best stuff on YouTube about choosing a college degree, you can check out my college degree course down below. It's College 101. Pretty much any question you have about college, getting the most out of college with the least amount of time, effort, and money is going to be answered in that course. And if you haven't done it already, only about 20% of you or so are actually subscribed to this channel. Most of you are just lurkers. So come on, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and of course, as always, gently boop the like button. All right, so the first one on this list is going to be actuarial science. And I know it's called science, but this is more mathematics related. It is definitely a mathematics type major, and it's gonna be all about calculating risk. Now, getting an actuarial science degree is gonna lead you to becoming an actuary, and they can be employed in all kinds of different industries. Now, as always, guys, I've made videos on almost every single degree that I'm gonna talk about on this list. So if you have any other questions uh, on these degrees, just check out my channel because there's probably a video on it. So I'm not gonna go too deep into the details on these, but pretty much when it comes to becoming an actuary, getting an actuarial science degree is great, um, but the only problem with that is you can actually become an actuary with just a mathematics degree. And so the statistics on this one are great. Actuaries make amazing money, pretty decent job demand there. Um, so overall, this one is gonna go into A tier. The reason this one is going into A tier and not S tier is because of the fact that if you just got a mathematics degree and then took a few extra classes, you could very easily become an actuary. And so the big problem with this one is that it's not as flexible as something like a mathematics degree. Next one on the list is going to be an agriculture degree. And this one is gonna be all about farming and specifically the science behind farming. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, made a whole video about this one. The statistics are not good. And and I think the main reason for this is because when it comes to a skill like farming, for instance, learning how to farm, you really can't learn this in a classroom. There are many things in the world that you can learn in a classroom setting. That is the best way to learn many different skills in the world. Farming is not one of them. The best way to learn how to farm is to become a farmer or to work for a farmer. And so for that reason, this one is going to go into F tier. The next one is very similar. It's going to be animal science, and this is going to be the side of farming that involves animals. Now you might be thinking, oh, animal science, there's animals are so adorable. I love animals, but this is actually for the most part, uh, the part of animal science where you're going to be working with animals that are going to be eaten, they're going to be consumed. So that might not be as attractive to some people, right? So we're gonna be talking about cows, pigs, poultry, etc. And for much of the same reason that agriculture goes into F tier, the statistics are not good on this. There's not very much demand. This is one of those skills that it's much better to learn in real life. And so for that reason, it goes into F tier. Next on the list is going to be architecture. This is gonna be all about designing and building buildings. Now, I personally think architecture is awesome. I love looking at the amazing buildings and how you know they're different depending on the cultures and the area that you are across the world. But with that being said, I think a lot of other people agree with me. And so architecture is somewhat saturated. A lot of the time you will not be able to get a job with just a bachelor's degree. You have to get at least like a master's degree in order to become an architect. But with that being said, I do think architecture is one of those skills that is best learned or at least you know started to be learned in the classroom. Room. If you are able to become an architect, you know, make a name for yourself, etc., you can make good money with this one. It's just a little bit difficult to get your foot in the door. And so for that reason, this one is going to go into C tier. Next on the list is going to be biochemistry. And this is going to be focused on the chemistry of living organisms. Now, when it comes to biochemistry, it has better statistics than biology or chemistry on their own. And it's also just, uh, generally speaking, way more useful than biology and a little bit more useful than chemistry. And out of all these science-related degrees, 
degrees, you know, because STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Biochemistry is one of the better ones. This also makes a fantastic uh, pre-med or, you know, pre-health type degree. So let's say you're planning on becoming, you know, either a medical doctor or a PA or a nurse practitioner, something along those lines. Biochemistry makes a fantastic undergraduate degree. And so overall, when it comes to statistics and all things being equal, this one is going to go into A tier. Next on the list is going to be biology. And this is one of the most popular degrees out there. So many people graduate with a biology degree. And because of that, in my opinion, it has become a little bit saturated. Very difficult to get a job with a biology degree on its own. I actually knew a very close friend personally who was planning on going to medical school. She got a biology degree in undergrad plans change she didn't end up going to medical school she could not find a job with her biology bachelor's okay so she ended up having to go back to school ended up getting a doctorate now things did turn out okay for her but i think the point here is is she thought she was going to be able to get a job with just a four years bachelor degree and that did not happen so overall this one is going to go into c tier next on the list is going to be a chemistry degree now this one is going to be a little bit better than biology in terms of career career prospects, it's just more useful. But in my opinion, it's not as good as a biochemistry degree when you look at the statistics. So if you're thinking about going into chemistry, you're really passionate about that, maybe look into biochemistry or even uh, chemical engineering because there are gonna be a lot of overlaps in terms of the types of jobs you're gonna get, but those other two are gonna have a lot more opportunities. But overall, this one is gonna go into B tier. Next one on the list is computer science, and this one is a no brainer. Computer science is the new meta. It's probably the best possible degree that you can get. There's just so much opportunity out there for people who have computer science degrees. The one thing that I will say about computer science and, you know, becoming like a software developer, you know, programmer is if you are really good at teaching yourself, you're like an autodidact, you can technically either take like a boot camp or teach yourself how to do this stuff and get yourself a job. But for the vast majority of people out there, this is one of those skills that's probably best learned in the classroom. So unless you're someone who's like a child prodigy or you're just really good at teaching yourself stuff, or you're, you're basically just extremely entrepreneurial and you can just teach yourself stuff and kind of just, you know, maybe go take a boot camp and then figure the rest out on your own. It's probably a good idea to get a computer science degree. For instance, if I wanted to go into programming and do it professionally, I would get a computer science degree myself. But with that being said, there's a lot of resources out there for people to get into computer science and just technology degrees in general and learn them on their own without going to university. That is a bit of a risky move. It's to be harder for you to get your first job out of college but it can pay off in some circumstances but that is not to say that getting a computer science degree is a scam it's still an incredibly good investment it just might be that there are better ways to get to your end goal. This one is definitely, definitely S tier. Next on the list is going to be engineering. This one, in my opinion, was the old meta. Still very, very good. Engineering degrees are fantastic. I just think that computer science and sometimes like technology related degrees are passing engineering degrees up. And I think the main reason for that is because they've been so good for so long. Pretty much everybody knows that, you know, if you become an engineer, you're going to be relatively successful. You look at a lot of the classic careers, you know, engineer, lawyer, architect, uh, doctor, etc. And some of those other careers, especially lawyer, for instance, have kind of gone down in value quite a bit. And the main reason for that is just simply because they've gotten saturated. They were popular for so long that so many people ended up going into them and they have gotten somewhat saturated. That has happened to engineering a little bit as well, but it is not nearly as bad as becoming a lawyer. Now, there are tons of different engineering degrees and I'm gonna have to do an entire separate video ranking those, uh, but generally speaking, engineering as a whole is really good. The only thing I will say about it is it's also incredibly difficult. Pretty much everybody who has gotten an engineering degree says it's one of the most difficult things they have done in their life. And with a lot of other degrees, you can actually finish them early if you're smart about how you do it. You can finish them in three years, even two and a half years. I talk about that in my course down below, how you can finish things much faster than the average person. However, with engineering degrees, a lot of the time it might actually take you more than four years. It might take you five years, for instance, in order to finish these degrees because they're that hard. But with that being said, if you're somebody 
anybody who can do it. You can put yourself through that rigorous uh, academic environment. Engineering degree is without a doubt S tier. Next on the list is going to be environmental studies. This is going to be all about studying the environment so that we can preserve planet Earth and all that good stuff, which I think is awesome. Big fan of this. Unfortunately, I have to be objective here and tell you guys the truth when it comes to these statistics, and this one does not look very good. I think if you're really interested in you know, preserving the environment and stuff like that, and you're just dead set on that, that's gonna be your career. Uh, I would recommend maybe going into environmental engineering just because of the fact that you're gonna have a lot more career prospects. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, environmental studies is going to go into D tier. Next one on the list is exercise physiology, exercise science, and this is going to be all about studying the science behind exercising. A lot of people are very passionate about working out and exercise, and I think that's awesome as well. There's entire, you know, community on YouTube of channels that have gotten well over a hundred million uh, subscribers and they all they talk about is working out. There's an entire industry around it where people tell you the best ways to work out. But when it comes to these statistics here, they are very, very bad. And I think the main reason for this, whether you agree with it or not, is the main value of a personal trainer, for instance, which is a common career that you would go into with this degree, is being able to motivate the person that they are training. And you absolutely do not need to get an exercise science degree in order to become a personal trainer. Now, should you need to? Maybe. Uh, if I was going to hire a personal trainer myself, maybe I would want them to have an exercise science degree, but unfortunately, the market doesn't necessarily agree with you or me. The market is very unforgiving here and getting this degree is just gonna be one of the worst investments. It's also extremely popular degree and so it's very saturated. So this one kind of just has a double whammy going on with it. Uh, this one definitely goes into F tier. Next on the list is going to be food science and this one is actually relatively useful. If you've ever visited a factory where they make food, maybe like the Coke factory for instance uh, in Atlanta, I visited did that when I was younger. It's really fascinating how they go about making food. You know, the whole process of how they go about making different sodas, for instance, at the Coke factory, figuring out what sodas are gonna be popular, which ones are not gonna be popular, trying to invent new flavors. I got lots of flavors. Also figuring out how you can preserve food for the longest amount of time, making it as tasty as possible, making it as healthy as possible, hopefully. Now I was pleasantly surprised that this one is relatively decent. It's still not the best, but it's also not the worst. So the only uh, downside to this one I'd say is you know, you can get a lot of these food related jobs with different degrees that are much more flexible. Degrees like chemistry, biochemistry, etc. You can get a lot of these food related jobs with those degrees as well. And so for that reason, food science is going into C tier. Next on the list is going to be forestry. And this is gonna be not only um, you know, the whole process of cutting trees down and utilizing the wood, but also making sure that you are utilizing that in such a way where it doesn't destroy entire ecosystems. Now, this one does sound very popular, of course. I mean, I think a lot of people out there would be really happy to be able to just kind of like walk around the forest all day and get paid to do it. You know, you'd be spending a lot of time outside and to, truth be told, there are some jobs out there that would allow you to do that. But the statistics don't look very good on this one. Pay isn't amazing, very difficult to get a job. And so for that reason, this one goes into D tier. Next on the list is going to be geology. And this is gonna be the study of the Earth's uh, physical structure, substance, and also its history. Now you might get a job like this and think that you'd just be going around like picking up rocks and just studying rocks. A lot of people are passionate about that. They like collecting different types of crystals and rocks. But a lot of the jobs are gonna be actually in the gas industry. And energy related jobs in general tend to be very volatile. So for instance, there might be tons of jobs at one time, and then a few years later, everyone gets laid off. But with that being said, this is a relatively flexible degree and the statistics aren't bad. You can get paid pretty well and there's a lot of different careers that you can go into. So this one is going to go into B tier. Next on the list is going to be information technology. Hello IT, have you tried turning it off and on again? And I just say information technology related degrees. So for instance, there's information technology management, information technology systems, there's a lot of information or IT related degrees. Now this is gonna fall kind of under the same category as computer science where with a lot of these you can get into the careers without actually getting a degree. It's much harder to do it that way, 
but it is possible. But with that being said, getting a degree is not a scam by any means. It's just gonna make things a lot easier for you. And unless you're somebody who's an autodidact, you can teach yourself things really easily, that might be the best way to go. So the numbers here are great great pay, lots of job opportunity. You're gonna end up working in the tech industry most likely, and that's an industry that has probably more opportunity than any other industry out there except for maybe finance. So yeah, this is a solid option. It is going into A tier. I'll also say that, you know, IT and tech related degrees, in my opinion, are relatively future proof. So that's another thing that's kind of an added bonus. Next on the list is going to be a mathematics degree. And I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. Now, the only thing I'll say here is that it's a little bit difficult with this one because, you know, if you get a bachelor's in mathematics, that isn't going to mean you're gonna become a mathematician, right? So if you wanna become a mathematician, you're gonna to have to get like a master's or a doctorate. It's not as obvious or straightforward as a degree like nursing, for instance. If you get a nursing degree, you become a nurse. If you get an engineering degree, you're probably gonna become an engineer. So it's not as straightforward with a mathematics degree, so you really do have to look ahead, make sure you're doing your research and figuring out what careers you wanna go for. And on top of that, some of the skills you learn with mathematics degrees are a little more abstract and they're not as practical and useful in the real world. So something I talk about a lot on my channel, the concept of employable skills. There's a lot of skills out there that are valuable in my opinion, and they might even be useful in the real world, but they're not necessarily employable. So for instance, making YouTube videos is a very useful skill. It's been extremely useful in my life, but it's not necessarily employable. There's not a lot of job postings out there uh, for people to make YouTube videos. It's more of an entrepreneurial skill. But with that being said, with a mathematics background, you're gonna learn a lot of skills or base skills, I guess you could say, that are going to be valuable on the job market. For instance, a lot of people who graduate with math degrees end up becoming computer programmers. So with this one, really good potential pay. Uh, you might have a little trouble getting your first job, but once you get some actual work experience, um, get some skills, get some employable skills, I should say, uh, can be really good. And it is kind of rare for people to be good at mathematics. Everyone seems to be a mathophobe. And so for this one, uh, if you are good at math, um, it is a pretty difficult degree. It's one of the more difficult ones out there. Um, but if you are good at math, you're passionate about it, this one is definitely a tier. Next one on the list is going to be neuroscience, and this is going to be the science that deals with the structure and function of the nervous system and the brain. So with neuroscience, you're gonna be studying arguably the most complicated subject in the entire universe, which is the human brain. At least the most complicated subject that we know of. Now with this one, if you are able to get a job that can be high paying, generally speaking with a super complicated subject like this, you're gonna to have to get like a master's or a doctorate. There's also not a ton of options out there for you. This is one that does kind of pigeonhole you a little bit. It's not going to be nearly as flexible as a lot of the other degrees on this list. But with that being said, it doesn't have the most horrible statistics uh, out of all of these on the list. Uh, this one is going to go into C tier. Next on the list is going to be physics, which is the science that studies the nature and properties of matter and energy. Now, I talked about this one before. Might actually be the most difficult degree that you can possibly get. The average person uh, who gets a physics degree is pretty much like a borderline genius. And I talked about this in my video I did on the most difficult degrees. Also has kind of similar problems that a mathematics degree would have where Yes, you know, you're learning some things that are very valuable, but it's not necessarily an employable skill. And so you probably want to supplement what you're learning in school with more employable, you know, practical type skills. But with that being said, a lot of companies see people who graduate with physics degrees as assets, even if they don't necessarily have the skills that the company is looking for, they know that they're basically getting someone who's very smart and very hardworking, right? So they're gonna take a flyer on this person and they're gonna try to train them in whatever skill that they need to learn on the job. And so just like with mathematics, a lot of people who graduate with physics degrees, especially if it's a bachelor degree, they are going to go into the tech industry and become programmers. Or a lot of the time companies in finance industries might hire them just because they know that they're super smart. Now again, if you want to become a physicist, you're gonna to have to get at least a master's level degree, likely a doctorate. But overall, I think because of how difficult this one is, it's never gonna become saturated and that does play to its favor. This one is going into A tier. Next one on the list is psychology. This is one of the most popular degrees out there. I believe, uh, if my memory serves correctly, over 100,000 people graduate with a psychology degree 
in the United States every year. This one is totally saturated at the bachelor's level. It is almost impossible for you to get a psychology related job with just a bachelor's degree. Even if you get a master's degree at this point, it's pretty much saturated. Like you pretty much have to get a doctorate in order to have a chance to get an entry level job. But with that being said, there are a lot of viable careers out there that you can go into. For instance, you could become a social worker like my sister did. I think if this one wasn't so saturated, it might go into like C tier, maybe even B tier, but just because of the fact that it's so popular, I mean, psychology is extremely interesting. It's gotten saturated, and for that reason, it is going to go into D tier. Next on the list is going to be recreation and leisure studies. Uh, this is one where you study recreation and leisure, and it always makes me think of the show Parks and Rec, which is a great show. But yeah, unfortunately, you know, big surprise here, studying how to have fun is something that doesn't have a lot of demand out there on the job market. It's not a very employable skill. And so when you look at the statistics on this one, they are abysmal. Uh, it's going to go into F tier. Next on the list is a statistics degree itself. And this one is very similar to mathematics and physics, but in my opinion, it's a little bit more useful in the real world. And I would actually put this one above mathematics in terms of usefulness, although it's probably a little bit less flexible. When you look at the stats on statistics, they aren't bad either. You can probably get a job with just a bachelor's degree and you likely want to supplement your statistics knowledge with a little bit of computer programming skills as well, learning something like SQL. But yeah, statistics degrees, extremely useful. I used to hate statistics, but over time I've just realized how unbelievably useful it is. And for that reason, this one is going to go into high A tier status. Check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead. If you haven't done it already, gently boop the like button. Come on, come on. Hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. Especially if you're somebody who's gotten some of these degrees, let me know what you think. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.